So today, this wasn't on my to-do list, but the tire gods looked up from the pits below and decided I hadn't spent enough money this month, ruined two tires on my little work car. So today we're gonna do a little review and uh, show you how I do it of my cheap Chinese tire machine. It's a Talon Plus One. Uh, we got it from Best Buy Auto Equipment out of, I don't know, somewhere California. And shipped all the way out here was uh, under $1,300 total. Um, I don't know a whole lot about tire machines, but I know I sure like this one. So the easiest way to do it is I'll just run through. We'll swap this tire out real quick and show you how it works. And no, I'm not a tire man. Take your valve core out. And uh, over here on this side, this thing's set up kind of like a portable. It just has a quick connector right here. It uh, says that it runs between 120 and 155 PSI. The compressor that I have here in the shop will only go up to 120. It seems to work just fine. Um, some of the things I don't like about it is if you use a coats machine, this table, turntable piece is in the middle here. And the bead breaker is out here on the right side, closest to you. So you try to use the bead breaker and you have to step in a little bit. The other thing you gotta watch out for is the shape of this table. If you have this out here too far, when you go to put your tire in there, it'll push the tire against the table. So you gotta have your table straight. I also don't care very much for the spring that they've got over here. There's a spring right down here that holds this arm in. When you're pushing on this, sometimes it's nice. Oops. See? That pedal needs to be over on the side. It'd be nice if you could just push this out of the way instead of having to hold it out. See how it wedges in there? It just kind of gets in the way. It's a pain in the butt. Tires are really cold. It's 28 degrees outside. I guess for you guys further north, that's what? Negative two degrees or something like that? Also, if you're using bigger fat tires, we did some 35s the other day. If you have your hand on here, right here like this and bigger tires, it'll come over and it'll crush the crap out of your hand. So be aware of that. Set it up there. This pedal on the far left, we let it all the way up goes in and out by itself. Push it all the way down. Closes. Locks on pretty good. Oh, I already forgot. Most important thing, you can never have too much lube. Lots and lots of lube. 
especially when it's cold out. And your pliers. So, you swing this arm over. There's an adjustment here. It screws in and out, and it adjusts how far this arm comes over. This lever brings it up and down, locks it into place. So you want to you just bring it right down on the rim and then when you push this lever up it lifts it up just a little bit off the rim adjust this uh, bolt over here on the side to keep it from pushing in then uh, it comes with this little tire iron we actually ended up buying a bigger one over here got from Harbor Freight for six or eight bucks. Pop it up. Oops. If you don't unlatch it because you don't know where the puddles are. And this is the part that's the biggest pain for me. They make an assist arm that goes on the other side that'll help hold up for you so you don't have to do it. Swing that out of the way. Take this pile of Goodyear garbage Never buy Goodyear tires. This is the sixth one, and this is all you get out of 20,000 miles. Okay, I don't balance my tires anymore unless I put a, a big boot or something on it. And before anybody freaks out, I'll show you when I get this back on here. Just kind of wipe it off, make sure I don't have any big goobers, chunks of dirt. And of course, more lube. And get your lube in here and when I say lube soapy water works but not very well if I were you this is the best stuff I've used so far just rim ease I don't even know the brand we get it from Prano Auto Parts there in town it's like $17. I think so far we've done something like, oh, 60, I believe. I think sounds right, 60, uh, yeah, 60 patches or so. And then we got Rico, my little helper. Amazon, 12 bucks. There's this lip right here. It's kind of hard to see, but you set your rim on that, or the bead, or whatever you want. You gotta make sure this gets underneath there. I have a bad habit of 
not paying attention and getting that over. So you just push down over here, keep your hands clear back. Boom. Get it up out of the way. And then I spin it over to this other side. So valve core hooks on easy. Now, when I was talking that I don't balance my tires anymore, as long as we don't have um, uh, tire pressure monitors, sensors in there, spray paint cap, Daisy BBs. Now, if you say these ruin the rim, I've probably got close to 60,000 miles using these BBs. They're kind of a pain when you have to patch your tire, but I just use a magnet pulling them out. Put about that many in there. I don't, I don't remember. We measured them out before. It ends up being almost two ounces but not quite just pour them in make sure you get them all off the bead so you don't have any bb's sitting in there pushing against the bead of the tire against the rim and then in theory we should be able to hit the bead blaster it has little air jets underneath Now, before you air it all the way up, release your clamps so you're not putting unwatted force on the bottom of there. Put your valve core back in. This is kind of hard to see. It has its own pressure gauge here. And this pedal down here on the floor. If you push down too hard, you hit the bead blaster and it blows dirt all over your face. And apparently, my gauge took a crap on me. Or else I've got way too much air in there. That's what I thought. I've only got like 20 pounds in there. All right, so the gauge, I guess, is only good for 60 or so tire patches, and then it takes a crap. Until the gauge quit, that was really handy. There's also a little button right here underneath the gauge. If you push that, you can let air out of it. So I'm gonna have to find another gauge because I don't like not having that.
There we go. Oh, and I lost my valve cap. Anyway, just like that, new tire, the BB's inside of it. Uh, using them BB's, we started doing it on trailer tires. Makes your trailer tires last quite a bit longer. Uh, I don't have an exact mileage, but they pull easier, believe it or not. We had some a homemade trailer. The rims were so bad, it just would shake the pickup. But putting the BB's in there, it's nice. So here's right. how it works. This arm comes over, and if you want it a little further off the rim, you just screw this in and it pushes the arm out further. That way you can set it right on the rim, right where you want it. Um, the arm here, push this down, and that flips up to grab it. Flip it down. Pops back up, swings out of the way. Um, we were looking at one that the whole thing tilts back. Decided against it because it ends up taking a lot more room. Comes with an oiler, pressure gauge, that quick attach. Comes with a little bucket to put your lube in, which is a little inconvenient compared to the red ones that seal it up every time. But if you don't use it every day, it's kind of nice. You can. Put the lid on it here and uh, keep it from evaporating. This is the spring that I don't care for but is a super easy fix. I just haven't done it because I'm lazy. Okay so here's the pedals. This is for the bead breaker but when you're sprung out leaning clear over weird your foot naturally wants to go to the furthest outside one which is the table. And that's awkward. Also, if you get it just wrong, it's kind of a pain reaching under here to grab this. Once again, it's not a real big deal. But you lift up on the pedal, spins counterclockwise, down on the pedal clockwise, speed breaker, clamps. I don't remember the specs on it. Um, I did a 20 inch rim with a 30 inch tire or a 32 inch tire and it worked just fine. I had plenty of room to go. Um, I've only clamped on the outside of the rim one time. That was on an 18 inch rim, worked just fine. Here's the bead blaster thing. You push it down partially to add air through this little deal for airing up your tire. And you push all the way down, and these little jets here are what blast the air. Gauge to tell you how much pressure is in the tank. What I didn't realize is this whole pedestal here that the arm's mounted to is a storage tank. So I was going to buy a bigger air compressor, but it turns out I haven't had to. The little roll air that does 120 is working just fine. Um, we've done heavy sidewall 14 plies, and you saw how easy the little 16 inch car tires go. Runs off these little, the hydraulics are air for the clamp. I'm sure at some point I'm going to hook this on something. The air fittings aren't the greatest, but they're still holding, even when it's real cold. It's 60 degrees in here now, but it was 20 when I came in this morning. And the bead blaster runs on air, and the turntable is 110. That's another thing that was nice about this machine. I didn't have to wire it for 220. That is all I can think of to tell you about this thing. It works good, 1300 bucks. Uh, everything inside, I'm not gonna take the panel off, but everything inside, looks very well built the only thing I can see is the air fittings aren't the greatest but they haven't failed yet if they do fail they're all common sizes it'd be easy to just go get a new fitting 
that's it. That's how I changed my tires. Thanks.